Afternoon guys, we're just sorting out some figs here today, getting ready for when the weather really starts to warm up, although uh, it feels like it's about 21, 22 degrees here at the moment in Brisbane, it feels quite warm, quite nice. But I was sorting out all my figs, I'm um, getting ready for the new season, I've got a heat bath behind me over there where we just came from, down here uh, a whole bunch that are just getting ready to kind of Put together look at what needs to be potted up uh, look what state they're in they've been a little bit ignored in the last couple of months while i've been getting established here and um yeah i thought i'd give a bit of a an update on these what i'm planning to do as the weather really warms up and maybe have a look at some of the things i put in the front yard just because it's been a while these figs here are just the first ones that i've pulled up as you probably saw back there i have another i don't know 30 40 different figs still to pull out um, and these are just the first ones that came to hand and there's some really cool ones in here that I'm looking forward to this year This one's one that I'm really looking forward to called it um, um, These figs as if you've been playing along at home have been watching the videos you probably know that um, Were all generally first year cuttings last year So this will be their second year in pots for the majority of them and this will be the year that we start to really see um, a bit of an improvement in any figs that are produced compared to the first year and they'll just get better and better as the years go on but I also want to start identifying as they fruit number one are they true to type as what we purchased so I want to know that the cuttings that I got that are going to be fruiting for the first time are correct and I want to be identifying of those which are the best ones which ones can I um, keep and add to a permanent long-term collection which ones can I maybe get rid of uh, which ones are super exceptional that I might want to pass along got a couple in here that I'm really excited about these are Smith so Smith cuttings they haven't done a lot since I put them in um, these were cuttings around they'll put in around December and as you can see they've done very little since then and that's largely because I haven't been paying them the attention that I should it really goes to show how hardy digs are you can see I've let them dry out a bit and if you have a look at some of these pots over here here's a really good example look how much I've let this dry out you can see it's just a big hard dry lump in there and yet this fig is still green and healthy even in the middle of winter you can see that this is quite a quite a dry root ball and um, figs are very very forgiving and it's one of the reasons that for anybody that is kind of getting into maybe growing plants and fruits in pots trees and pots that figs are a really really good option because not only are the fruits delicious and there's a really large selection of the different types you can get but they are very very forgiving uh, they're very easy to take cuttings from you can graft them with relative ease and they'll just continue to kind of produce and be happy for you and as you're seeing you can get put a cutting in the ground and less than 12 months later you can be eating a fruit off that same stick so figs are really high value um, especially if you are kind of starting to get into collecting fruits and trying to fruit things in pots so we'll keep an eye on some of these as we go along the year we'll definitely see some more tastings from me as as they start to fruit um, in Brisbane I don't know if it's typical but none of these well, the majority of these um, retained all their leaves through the winter so we're at approaching the end of July and they haven't actually lost any of the leaves some of them have so it's a big mess down here the devil chickens have literally got in every single pot and have been rooting them all up but some of these plants have been uh, have lost all their leaves but the majority of them are holding them so there's another one that actually did go dormant um, I'm not certain why some did and some didn't and it's it's going to be a bit of a learning curve for me to see how um, Brisbane goes in particularly in relation to figs over the next 12 months when it starts to get really warm and humid into December, January, February. The garden as a whole, so one of the last videos I did which was actually probably six to eight weeks ago in Brizzy I had a bit of a show of this front yard um, where I've started to put in some different tropical fruits that aren't figs um, so we'll have a look maybe in this garden first to see what I've put in we've got a Japotacaba here so the Japotacaba love 
the um, the weather so far here in Brisbane. They've put on a lot of growth, so all of this is new growth in just a couple of months here. Um, they're they're doing really well. Um, I've had these Japota Kaiba in pots now since the very start of the videos that I started putting on YouTube, which was now two, maybe even three years ago. These have been in pots and. Um, they've really started to flourish being put in the ground here. So Japota Kaba, I've got two of these in the front yard. One's here. This one here, it's called a Nangapaya. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Nangapaya, N-A-N-G-A-P-I-R-E. It's part of the Eugenia family. I think it's Eugenia Rapanda. Um, this one here I let go in a pot and it got a little bit sad until the day that I decided it could have a spot in the garden. Put a monstera back there behind it. Now, this monstera might end up getting too big for this spot. Monstera can go quite large. They like to climb all over things, but um, I'll let it go for a while. And with these sorts of plants, if they ever do become too much, maybe, maybe for instance, this Tripodacaba, even though they're relatively slow growing. If it does kind of get in the way in the future as it gets towards the roof, I can cut it right back or I can pull it out if necessary. But I've got a Monstera back there. I'm very keen to try a Monstera fruit. Um, they're one of those things that unless you grow it yourself, they're quite hard to come across, so Monstera. Over here we put a mango in, so I've got a nice big frontage that I was wondering what to do with. I don't particularly like hedges already. Since I've got in, they're starting to get a bit messy. You can see that they kind of sprout out and they require trimming back, like you can see one sticking up over there. Just uh, just a hassle. They don't produce anything useful. They look nice when they're maintained, but I'd much rather um, a different kind of tree or a shrub in there. And I've got a couple of plants that I will be putting in there. But this is a Valencia Pride Mango. Hasn't done a lot since I've put it in, so this has probably been in for eight weeks now, maybe maybe slightly less or slightly more. Um, it did flower prolifically. Um, I cut the majority of the flower buds back, so these are just uh, some of the remainder of the flowers. And since I put it in, it hasn't dropped any leaves, but it also hasn't put on any leaves. Um, I'm sure as it starts to get a bit warmer, that will wake up. Now one of the things that I'm going to put and replace, I'm going to replace the hedge just about here. I'm going to put in um, a green sapote which I've got sitting out the back waiting to go. I'm just going to wait till it gets a little bit warmer um, just in case. I'm going to pull out that shrub hedge there and I'm going to put in a green sapote there. A couple of meters along, two to three meters along here in this spot I have a lychee which is an Erdon Lee which is one of the really large lychees that's going to go in that spot there. Here. This is one of the white sapotes you may have seen from one of my other videos that was in a pot. This salt for about four weeks and has recently started to put on a whole bunch of new growth. So it tried to flower for some reason. Um, I got rid of all those flowers and now it's just starting to really branch out at the ends where these were kind of uh, all just sulking before. And it has put on a fair bit of growth. I can tell this is going to be an extremely quick growing tree. I'm sure by the next time we do a video update on this, this tree will look entirely different. Got a bunch of here. This is a peanut butter fruit. This one is an extremely rapid growing plant. The new lip growth that comes out on this looks a bit chloriotic, but it actually hardens off and goes quite dark green very quickly. So it, it comes out with these really kind of yellowy, light green lime leaves, and then they kind of harden off into these um, darker green leaves. Uh, this has grown quite significantly since I put it in there. I gave it a bit of a trim back. I expect that this is another one that's going to be quite large by the time we come back and we do our updated video on it. I water these by the way about once a week. I put a trickle on as you just saw, just like this. Um, and I leave that on there for about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes once a week, just to let it really kind of soak into the ground. So a bunch of here. Got jackfruit here. So jackfruit are really great plant to grow these leaves look a bit ratty it hasn't done a hell of a lot since I put it in but it's just recently started to kind of wake up and uh, start to do some more things so it started to put on some new leafy growth and I expect that 
once this one really wakes up jackfruit are very quick growers so that will be um, another tree that's going to look really different put a relinea in here now this relinea has had good times and bad times but it absolutely loves where it is it is quick i've trimmed back branches on this now a couple of times so i've come in here and it's grown so quick that it's even had pruning cuts made since i've put the plant in so um, i really want to make sure that this this plant grows to a beautiful shape um, i'm very excited to try relinea and it just seems to love this spot so far we'll keep our fingers crossed from the relinea but uh, very excited about that this one here was in the grow tent if you watch some of my old videos it got attacked by aphids it got totally defoliated then it got defoliated again in winter in canberra and after winter when I didn't water it one day it got defoliated again just keeps coming back so these are very vigorous hardy plants these are linear um, it likes a fair bit of water I do occasionally water this one twice a week just to give it a bit of extra moisture put a wompy in here this wompy is another exceptionally fast growing plant so this one has put on a lot of growth since I put it in just about five weeks ago all this growth in here is brand new so it's, it's really kind of growing up everywhere along that stem it's due for a prune in fact to kind of shape this one up uh, but that wompy is doing really well if it keeps being this vigorous it's going to definitely need to be uh, pruned so it doesn't get over the roof and in fact there's solar panels up there so have to be careful that it doesn't start shading out the, um, the solar panels if it gets too big and vigorous I'll see if it can't be maintained to maybe a, a 1.8, 2 metre sort of height. Uh, maybe, maybe up to 3 metres. We'll see how we go with that one. Cherimoya here. This one here is looking a bit sickly and sad. It was really having a bad time for some reason. Um, I just came by about a week ago and I did some pruning cuts on this to see if it would help. And it has since then started to flush out along here. So the cherimoyas I've found both in the grow tent um, previously and in the garden really do appreciate getting uh, those those pruning cuts and everywhere that it, you've, I've made the cuts it has budded out so it is um, it's one of those plants that just seems to really appreciate that before I did that it kind of sat here and languished and in fact I've got another cherimoya which we didn't look at over here which I haven't pruned and went in at the exact same time and this one has done nothing since I put it in. So it's had this kind of spindly stick that's had a single leaf on it since it's gone in. It's not dead, that, that, actually that might be dead at the top there. Yeah, that is dead. So it's actually died back to this top leaf. The rest of the plant hasn't done really anything at all. So I think adding a couple of pruning cuts onto that. And in fact, let's do it. I think adding these pruning cuts to these cherimoyas is a very effective way to kind of wake them up. So this long stem isn't particularly good looking anyway. So I'm going to cut it down to an outward facing bud on an angle about there. I think I'll cut this one to this bud here. I think I'll cut this back one here. I think I'll cut this one. This one doesn't have a very well positioned bud on it actually. Um, I might actually, I do like the angler. I'm going to take this one off just here. We'll see what it does with that. Around this side, there's two branches coming out at the same angle, which I don't love. So to balance it, I'm going to take off this bottom branch at the stem. And I'm going to branch this one off here. All right, now we have half a cherimoya. We'll see what that does. We'll come back, have a look at this cherimoya in a couple of weeks. We'll see if that hasn't helped this one come along. But um, as I was showing with this other cherimoya, making those cuts on it really does kind of wake it up and make it more vigorous and happy. So two cherimoyas. We have here a Patanga tuba. Now this Patanga tuba was a stick in one of the very first videos, a tiny little stick when I was uh, first made a video or two. 
it's since started flowering since it's in the ground and it's flowered before but none of these flowers has ever actually produced a fruit so I'm not sure if these need a pollinator I'm going to give it a bit of time to see if any of these um, these flowers actually eventuate into a fruit um, and if they don't I might have to get a second Batanga tuber to put in put in some raspberries and some strawberries and other little things in here we have another Japotacaba again very happy since it's come in all this is new growth since it was planted all new growth coming in there these Japotacaba really love um, Brisbane it appears so I'm very excited to try Japotacaba too and another thing about Japotacaba if you grow them is they've got this really kind of pretty mottled bark and especially as they as they grow up and um, yeah just one of those plants that's curious flowers along the stem really beautiful kind of tree that I'm looking forward to and finally we have a Brazilian cherry in here and this is another one that's really appreciated being put in the garden all of this growth here it's all new it's all come on just in the last kind of six weeks maybe even four weeks since i put this in the ground this one has just flowered as well so there's uh little small flowers on this plant i'm not sure if any of these are going to eventuate into fruit as either but i guess we'll find out as uh, time goes on if they don't i've got another brazilian cherry in the back where um i can plant that out as a Maybe a pollinator. This is um, one of the named varieties. This is the Black Beauty from Dailies. Anyway, guys, that's just a bit of a tour and an update of the front yard. We'll keep an eye on these uh, these figs as I pop them up, particularly the interesting ones, the rarer ones. We'll definitely do some tastings of them this year. Now that the weather is really starting, I feel like it feels like it's changing. It feels like it's getting warmer. The sun's getting one to two minutes of extra sunlight every day right now, and it's only going to get quicker. I'm going to be um, really focusing on making sure that we put a lot of growth on these figs, and I've got a few ways that I do that. Maybe we'll talk about that in a different video, just to make sure that these figs put on a lot of growth and are really robust and healthy. Keep an eye on our Smith figs and our other really expensive ones to see what they taste like and if they're worth the money. But in the meantime, guys, I'll leave you there, and I'll catch you in the next one.